Brendan, thank you for your time again. How much has this murder affected Britain? It's affected Britain a huge amount. There's a huge amount of shock and anger and confusion and just outright horror that something like this could happen to a much loved MP. He was loved across the House of Commons. He was very well respected. As you say, he was a good, kind man. He was a devout Catholic. And for him to be slaughtered in this way by allegedly by a radical Islamist is just horrific and unimaginable. So it's called shockwaves through the country. I think lots of people are wondering why we can't have an open, frank discussion about the problem of Islamic radicalism and what we might do to tackle it. Because once again, Andrew, the debate about that is already being shushed just three days after this attack. And I find that really disturbing. Well, speaking of exactly that, Brendan, I mean, the debate that I'm tending to see, uh, some of it strikes me as not just completely beside the point, but vicious and even self, self-hating, victim-blaming. Uh, for instance, the former police chief of North Wales, the left-wing Arfon Jones, even blamed Armis' own party for his death, saying, this is what happens when you have a government that divides and rules and sows hate, fear, uh, hate and division. Uh, someone somewhere will respond violently, he said. So that's a victim blaming. What do you make of this debate? That is, if only we could be kinder to each other and if only the heat could be taken out of the political debate. Is that really what killed this politician? No, it isn't. And I'm finding this discussion really, really strange and bizarre and very telling as well, because the whole discussion over the past three days has focused on the need for more kindness in politics, more respect, the need to end all the Twitter storms and all the name calling. Now, we might all agree that those are good things to try and pursue, to try and stop that kind of poisonous culture. But David Amos wasn't killed by nasty tweets. He wasn't killed by rude words. He was killed by, we presume, this is what we know so far, by an alleged radical Islamist. And that's the thing that people are trying to avoid. We have Islamist denialism in this country, a real unwillingness to confront the fact that scores of Britons have been killed by radical Islamists over the past five years. And I think this current discussion about the need for a kinder, gentler politics is generalising the problem and turning it into a problem of political culture, when in fact it's a problem, we presume, of radical Islam. The chattering classes in this country would do anything to avoid discussing that problem, and they're doing that once again. Well, look, absolutely true. I mean, if, uh, if the alleged killer had left behind a right-wing uh, internet tract uh, of rambling uh, 45 pages, we'd be passing every single par in the newspapers, I'm sure, and blaming every person that's mentioned. But here, suddenly, boop, uh, no interest. Brendan, one thing that struck me, and I might be, I might be wrong here, I don't know. On the one side, allegedly, this Islamist, a sort of death cultist uh, in the brand that he was following. On the other, a Catholic that's given his life and, and been champion of good causes, a symbol, really, of of Britain's continuity and, and, and service. Talk about this contrast. A huge contrast. You know, he was a devout family man, dev devoted to good causes. Not enough people are, are commenting on the fact that he was killed in a church. It wasn't a religious service. He was holding a surgery with his constituents, but he was killed in a, in a Methodist church. Uh, he was a devout Catholic. And, you know, Andrew, one of the most depressing things about this whole horror is that he was denied the last rites because the police wouldn't let a priest through uh, to the crime scene. And that's a real blow to the Catholic community here in the UK as well. They feel that that is a real symbol of religious illiteracy, that something like that could happen. But yes, on one side, we have a devout Catholic, a good religious man. And on the other side, we have a religious extremist, allegedly, who carried out a barbaric attack that has shocked the nation. So you couldn't ask for a starker contrast of values than this. Well, I tell you what, those words about denying the last rights, you know, we've got to maintain the crime scene. Haven't we gone through exactly that with this lockdown frenzy where people have been denied access to the bedside of dying relatives because of health, etc., etc.? Brendan, I just wonder what is going on in the West generally, not just Britain, your country, but here in Australia as well. Thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it.